your word is made alive to us and it's unveiled, revealed to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for rising up big in us. We lean yes. back on you, great Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for showing us. We receive it. We yield ourselves to it and we dare to think God's thoughts. Praise in God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Start in Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Nah. I heard one minister say that uh, he went to a, a service, and the preacher was famous for preaching in Mark 11:24. And he got there, and he, he was thinking to himself, "Yeah, these people they need this in Mark 11:24. They need uh, it. they need ha, to hear." And the Lord said, "Well, what about you?" And the oh, Lord said, well, "You with that with you uh, with what you just thought or with his attitude." The Lord told him, "Yeah, you're gonna get no more revelation on that." Ooh. And so he thought, "No, no, no, I, I no, I, I I repent. I do want I, this is good. I need to hear this." Wow. So just because we've heard it before yeah. doesn't mean we've got it. I heard a story about a minister and his grandson. He, pay, he would pay for his grandkids to go to swimming lessons. He had a swimming pool and he had a gate so it was safe. But he wanted them to be safe and be able to swim. And there's one, one grandson, uh, him and the dad, which was the son-in-law of this person telling the story, he'd come up and he's like, yeah. The son-in-law goes, oh, yeah, he can swim. He's, he's doing real good at swimming. Tell him, you can swim. It. Yeah, Poppy, I can swim. I can swim. And so he says, uh, the minister goes, yeah, I knew there was some stuff going on, and they were real positive about it, but I didn't want to know how they could swim in the shallow end. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to know how they could swim when I'm around. I want to know how they swim when I'm not there. So this grandpa picks up the kid and throws him in the deep end of the pool. Um. And the kid sinks. He's doing swimming motions, but he, he sinks to the bottom of the pool. And uh, the ministry goes... Um, if I were you, I'd jump in and I'd get him. And uh, he says Christians are like that, especially with their faith. Everybody can be in faith on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we need to know what's our faith doing like on Monday, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. It needs to be constant. Yeah. And actually, verse 22 in the Amplified, it says, have faith in God constantly, mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. So... Jesus made this so simple that anybody could do it. Anybody could do it. A little kid can do it. An uh, elderly person can do it. And everyone in between, simple people, smart people. <laughs> he made it so simple. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. yeah. And in verse 22, let's read it from the beginning. Jesus is answering after the miracle of the fig tree. After he cursed, he spoke nine words to it. Well, in our English language, whatever. He, d he didn't speak all that. He didn't pray that long about it. He didn't give a thesaurus prayer. He said, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And he walked away. That was it. And uh, it withered up. The disciples were excited. And Jesus turned to them and said, have faith in God. And we know that means to have the faith of God. There's different translations. But I heard this translation today. And we're going to just look at this from a little bit different angle. And here's a different translation. It says, lay hold on God's faithfulness. Lay hold on God's faithfulness. Our faith is in response to God's faithfulness. Because our faith has to be based on something that's unmoving. Or else it's presumption. You know, we can look around us and we act in presumption and assurance in everyday life. Um, anybody ever trip on the, on the floor? Trip on, trip on nothing? Yeah. Choke on air. <laughs> Choke on air. Yep. Um, but we, you know, just think about your own life. 
What things are reliable? What's faithful in your life? I think about the first things that come to mind are machines, mowers, vehicles. And sometimes me and my dad will go, just kind of as a fun thing, make a little extra money, we'll go to where they have auctions for vehicles. And we don't want to just see the pictures because the pictures can look beautiful. They can look really nice. Sometimes you can make a decision hastily. But we go there to check it out. We want to see what's going on under the hood. We want to try it out, see what it sounds like. Is this going to be reliable? And you act accordingly. You know, a lot of times we jump in there, something looks pretty, it sounds good, it's put in a nice package, maybe there's eight seasons of it, <laughs> and they made it look really nice, and it's crowdfunded, and it's a Jesus character, so it has to be right. But it's not reliable. You can't count on it. You can't base your life on it. And, well, and that's why God picked Moses. It says that what he would tell Moses to do something, and then right after, it. Moses yep. would do it. He did he it. He told yep. Moses to do something, Moses would do it. That's why he was leading those millions of people. He was found to be trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> Ever watch that? Uh, we used to watch that TV series. I don't recommend it, but Malcolm in the Middle. In one of the episodes, Malcolm got a job at, I don't know if it was a warehouse or a grocery store, but he was in the back. And the owner, or whoever's in charge, told him to break down the boxes and then bring them to a certain floor in this building. And he, had, he, he was smart. Sometimes we get in trouble when we're smart. Yeah. Sometimes we're so smart we can't get it to work. But he was so smart that he thought, well, no, it's faster if I do it this way. Mm -hmm. And he'd get in trouble with this boss because the boss would say, no, you're not doing it the way I told you to do it. Uh-oh. You know, because he's an employee. He's not an independent contractor. <laughs> you know, your taxes, that's how they differentiate that. You know, you get in trouble with your taxes if you file the wrong way to try to save money. You know, if you're taking uh, uh, commands from the business, you're not an independent contractor. But if you're doing it on your own, you know, there's a difference. But anyways, so this kid ends up losing this jo uh, his job because he wouldn't do it the way. You know, when you take a job, you agree to follow the rule of command. Yep. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Is he Lord or is he not? And we have this even in churches. Churches have it, some of the biggest problems. You know, Jesus in the earth, he had more problems with churchy people than he did with the sinners. Because yeah. the sinner knows they're a sinner. Well, the church people killed them. The church people killed them. Wow. Yeah. Man. They had to be right because Jesus was messing with their little empire that they put together. Wow. I just, I saw a thing that it said that um, they didn't pick Barabbas because they liked him. All the people, church people, all the people. They picked him because they hated the truth so wow. much. Wow. And how many times do people do that today? We hate the truth so much. Yeah. Now we're going to choose wrong. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> but laying hold of God's faithfulness, one of God's greatest aspects, one of his greatest characteristics is that he's faithful. Mm -hmm. You can count on it. Uh, hold your place here and look at Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I think it's verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 7, 9. It says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God. He is the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love Him and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. Wow. So He's telling these people to know the Lord, that He is God. And not only that He's God, but He's dependable. He's predictable. You can count on Him. He's going to follow through. If God says, I will show up, I'll do my part, and you can bank on that. If God showed one time yeah. that he would do something in the Bible, he never changes. Yeah. Wow. So he'll do it again. That's yeah. so good. If God ever showed one time that he was unfaithful. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. One time that he's untrustworthy, that you can't yeah. trust him. One time, because yeah. he never changes. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Wow. And we're supposed to be like him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. People are looking for something they can count on. Everything in the last two, three, four, well, longer than that, umpteenth years has been, the rug has been taken from, you know, what they thought they could count on, they couldn't count on. And 
they think that that God's that way. That's right. Because people, the churches that have given God a bad name, have either not told that God's good or they talk about that God's good, but there's no fruit. Mm -hmm. There's no proof. Yeah. Jesus said, if I don't do the works, then don't believe my words. There needs to be both. But believe me because of my works. Believe me because of my works. Yeah. In other words, he would teach people that the Father loves them, that they could, you know, healing, different things, and then he would demonstrate it mm -hmm. to be the truth. Can, can we say that about ourselves? I'm thinking about myself. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say that about me? Okay, you know, if you don't believe me, just believe the works of God. Yeah. Or like Chad was saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. Can, can we, we walk that? around yeah. and say that? say that? Yeah. <gasps> or, or are we like Facebook Marketplace? Where you say, I'm going to show up at this time. You plan, you make an appointment to meet, nobody shows up. So you make another appointment to meet, nobody shows up. You make another appointment, oh yeah, I'm on my way, never show up. A lot of people are like that, and then you can't depend on people anymore, yeah. so then you become suspicious of everybody. I think about uh, Todd White, and they would have some videos. Early in his ministry, he pressed in really hard into the word of knowledge and gifts of healings. And he'd go out in the street, and he'd talk to people who are atheists. And he'd they argue a little bit, and he goes, hey, you know what? Let me just pray for you, because he knew something that was going on in their physical body. And those atheists, they're smart. People are smart, you know, there's a lot of really smart people out there. I, I know for, for, just speaking on my own, I don't, I don't get very far trying to outsmart, it doesn't work. But they would get healed. Mm -hmm. And then he'd say, explain that to me. And he'd say, okay. Mm -hmm. If I don't do the works, don't believe my words. I was just, uh, I just saw a video of him and he was praying, talking to this guy and the guy spoke a different language so he had an interpreter. This guy had, uh, he was dressed up like Satan. Oh, yeah. He had, he was gray, like gray paint on his face, outfit. He had huge horn things. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, when Todd White was looking at him, he didn't act like he saw any of that stuff. And he was telling him his testimony. And then he wanted to pray with him. And he didn't just pray with them and take his little hand, you know. He, like, put his forehead to his forehead. Oh, my goodness. And it, the guy was just, yeah. like, so touched that wow. he was acting normal. And he was just praying that God would reveal himself to him and show himself that he's real. And I was just like, wow, that's yeah. amazing. But, you know, a person like anybody going out there to pray for people, you can't do that if you're not sure God's going to follow through. Yeah. You can't do any of that. You can't do the works of Jesus. You're never going to have faith. And these things all work. Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. It doesn't work. It's all in response. He's faithful. He's faithful. What he said, he'll, he'll back it up. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I like to say it this way. God is so much bigger. He's mm -hmm. so much greater. He's so much better than even the church people have been saying. Yeah. You know, they talk about, it, oh, God's a good God, and Jesus loves us, this, I know. But he's so much greater. And people try to, you can't express how big he is, how great he is, how holy he is. Anything that he has influence over is amazing. It's perfect. And that's who we're serving. And in Mark 11, or no, Mark, uh, Hebrews 11, we call this the Hall of Faith. And you can look through here, and the phrase, by faith, through faith, by faith, is in there 20 times. Mm -hmm. By faith. And this is inspired. This is not just random. Mm -hmm. This is inspired by the Spirit of God, by faith, through faith, by faith, by faith. That first, verse 2, for by it, by what? By faith, the elders. Uh, verse 3, through faith. Verse 4, by faith. Verse 5, by faith. Verse 7, by faith. Verse 8, by faith. Verse 9, by faith. Verse 11, through faith. It goes on and on. And not only can you call this the hall of faith, but every one of these by faiths, God proved himself faithful. Wow. 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 So I'm thinking of a truck, and I wanted to prove this truck was faithful before I started putting money into it. So I said, Dad, let's get in here, let's try something. So we took it off road in the snow, in the deep snow. Because I thought, if it can't make that, there's no reason to put any more money in it. But if you have a vehicle and it's made, you know, the first long trip, 
no problem. Second long trip, no problem. How many trips until that vehicle, you know, somebody asks, is this a reliable vehicle? You say, yes. How many times does God have, have to prove himself? Until we say, God, you are faithful. You'll do exactly as you said. But the reason people don't go to God every time there's an issue, every time there's a problem, is because you're reaching, you know, <laughs> be like if I, you know, was going to step out on the ice, we're in Minnesota here, on the ice when it freezes. But I keep that foot on land because I don't trust that ice. Whereas, you know, further on in the season, if I know, I'll jump, you can jump. Somebody who knows what's going on with that ice, they can depend. They jump. I think people need to do like Lillian Yeomans said that God loves when his children reach out over the aching void with nothing under their feet but the word of God. Yeah. Can I give a quick testimony? So I caught myself after I think it was preached, one Bible study, that do we even check in with God or do we just go ahead and buy it? Wow. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, when was the last time, you know? And I thought, well, I'm going to practice this. This is yeah. exciting. So I needed some new work shoes, and they're expensive because they're just super comfortable, and I get them from New Zealand. Anyway, so I'm like, well, why not? Lord, I'm going to go to you for these shoes. So I was led uh, to add up how much they normally are, and so 10% of that, which is actually a lot. Like, it's a crazy amount. So I did that. I'm like, thank you, Lord, for my new work shoes. So I'm like, I'm going to find an amazing, like, not even believable sale. And these things never go on sale. So I'm like, I'm so excited. So I sewed it. And almost every other day I was online searching for my shoes. Oh, this is going to be a good deal. So I found my shoes. I'm like, woo, great deal, except they didn't have the kind I like. I'm like, oh. So I waited longer. I'm like, thank you, Lord, for my work shoes. You know, go on there. They had these ones, and they were just a little bit different. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to like them. And the Lord was like, they were $80 off. This is an amazing deal. I've never seen this cheap before. So I bought them. And I was just like, I don't think I'm going to like them. Is this the shoe? Is this how it's going to happen? So I got them, and I made, I put them up to my old shoes that I really like. They're exactly the same. The Lord knew. Wow. I would have waited and skipped the wholesale because they weren't exactly the same. Wow. And so God is faithful every time we give him a chance. Yeah. Sometimes we don't even give him a chance. When I want to buy something, I just buy it. But that's not showing your uh, maturity in the Lord. It's not have yeah. faith in God. And not to say you can't buy something. No. But, you know. Why not? But it's substantial. You know, when it's something that means something to you. Yeah. 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 Well, and it even says that um, you you have not because you ask not. I didn't even check. We don't even ask. We don't even oh. check. How many times could we do that? And it, nothing is too small. Yeah. There's nothing too small. God told me. So clearly, his number one goal in life is to bless us. Yeah. But if we don't even let him, wow, yeah. so many things yeah. he wants to bless us with. Wow, wow. And it's always, you know, when we come up against something, we say, God, you know, you got to help me out with this. How's he going to help us? By faith, by wow. faith, by faith, through faith. Every one of these by faiths, they did something. Mm. God had them a lot. Most of the time, God would lead them specifically. <laughs> But they did something on their part, stepping out with nothing to support but what God had said. Yeah. And God was faithful. Every one of these, every one of these by faith, God was faithful. God was faithful to Enoch. God was faithful to Noah. God's faithful to us. Look at verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. That's a miracle. Yeah. That was the manifestation of what God promised to them. That was the miracle, her side of it. How, Sarah, if we were to ask Sarah when we got to heaven, how did you get that? It says right here, because she judged mm -hmm. him faithful wow. who had promised. Yeah. Sarah was focused on God's faithfulness. She had mm -hmm. laid hold of God's faithfulness. Now, she had some trouble at first. She laughed, kind of like, well, it was impossible. But when she had the child, and I had to find this for myself, because I heard somebody preach this. After she had the child, they named him Laughter. And she said, I want everybody who hears this to laugh with me. But not laughing mockingly, but laughing because God faithfulness. I heard Smith Wigglesworth, or I didn't hear him, but uh, heard of this, that he said that faith laughs at impossibilities. Mm -hmm. 
the thing that the devil will tell us, you know, that you'll never have that. It's impossible. You can't have that. I think we ought to once in a while go around our house or where we, you know, are and look at those things and just laugh at them. Ha, 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 ha. Look at all the impossibilities. Look at the impossible yes. things and laugh ah. at them. Because faith laughs at impossibilities. Why? Because God's coming through. He's got this. So He's working on it. Well, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so she would pr she praised God for his faithfulness. When all the circumstances were wrong, she, you know, it says through faith, so there was a point where there was no physical evidence of it, but she was thanking God for his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. She had judged God faithful. You know, when we praise God for his faithfulness, when we say, God, I praise you, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I thank you, Lord, that it's done in the spirit. You've already provided for it. And I thank you, Lord, for bringing it to pass in my life. You know, and you begin to praise God for it. That's your faith working. Uh, remember the story that Lillian Yeomans told about the, minister, uh, the missionary. And they had prayed for her. She was getting no better. And was that the one where God showed her a scale? One of those old-time scales? There's several stories along these lines. But anyways, the, the punchline of the story was that when she began to praise God and thank him for his faithfulness, that's when the healing came. Yeah. It's interesting here. It said that she judged God faithful. She judged God. Can we judge God? Mm -hmm. That that's, that's just sounds a little bit outlandish, doesn't it? Yeah. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Look at that. No judging. So you're judging me for judging, judging you for judging me for judging, judging you. Yeah, don't judge. No judging. Go on <laughs> the judge police. But there are things we're supposed to judge. We're supposed to judge ministries, people by their fruit. We're supposed to, we can judge God faithful, but the problem is so many are judging God to be maybe not faithful. Ooh. And it doesn't work. Faith is not a, well, Here's a plan B just in case. Here's, you know, if it, God doesn't come through, you might as well just forget God and just go to the doctor then. You're just gonna have to change thinking the of that as a possibility yeah. that God couldn't come through, that just like, That's that right just kills your whole faith right Well, there. let's just take that vehicle again. Let's say you've had this vehicle 10 years, never a hiccup. I mean, just routine maintenance. But you constantly act like, oh, you know, I better, you know what? <laughs> Hi, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drive 30 miles in case my car breaks down. And you're just like that all the time. People would think you're nuts. They go, what's wrong with your vehicle? Oh, I don't know, they're nothing. But you act like your vehicle's not gonna make it. People act like God's gonna, not gonna follow through, yeah. but it's not true. Mm -hmm. By faith, by faith, through faith, by faith, through faith. All these people, I mean, think about when we get to heaven and you talk to these people. How they talk about God. He'll, he'll, he'll follow through. He's not going to. Yeah, he, he'll, 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 uh, he'll make good on his word. I think about um, that we as believers, our life is like a trust fall. Mm -hmm. You ever do a trust fall? You line two people up the same way and they're both, they're both facing that way. And you tell the person in front, you know, you're going to fall back. But if that person, ooh, 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 uh, you can tell their trust by how they act. Or they keep looking back. Yeah, they keep looking back. <laughs> but if they fall just flat and that person catches them, you know, that's proof. We, we went to a youth thing in, uh, was it Branson, Missouri? Yeah. And they had a table. It seemed like it was tall, taller than a normal table. We had to climb up several chairs. There was like a table and on then a table, table yeah. on a table. They had us climb like up there. And then they had people lined up over here, like three or four on each side with their hands, you know, the same way. They were going to have you fall back. They even had you put your hands a certain way so that you wouldn't flinch and it whack somebody on the way down. I don't know, get somebody a concussion on the way did down. Did people do it? I, I did it. You know why I did it? Because you didn't want to. I knew one of the people in there. Oh. It was your student. Big guy. You played Body football. Builder. Real big guy. And I just, just seeing him gave me the courage to go up and do it. My heart was racing, but I did it. I fell Ooh. back and they caught me. So How big we is, don't yeah. see God as a big guy. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We think the problem's are bigger wow. than God. We think if we, if we roll it over on God, it'll squish poor old God. <laughs> and they'll have to go get his walker. <laughs> we serve the God. Jesus said, my father is greater than all. There is nothing greater than God. 
He's, he's so great that Jesus, in talking about his disciples, in praying to the Father, he said, Father, I've kept them in your name. I mean, just keeping the disciples in the name of God to keep them safe. Faithfulness. How great is God? Yeah. How great is our God? I was, Kelly had brought up one time, she's like, you know, I think I just learned a new love language. And it's when you say something and people believe you or they listen to you. How much more with God? Yeah. When we believe him at his word. That's why the Israelites, when they went around and around, they just would not believe God. Yeah. That was the thing that annoyed him the most. He's like, really? You know uh, what kind of person will just take people at their word? Hmm. Yeah. Our children. Yep. Yeah. Mm. They will just take you at your word. If you come across as a teacher or as a adult that you know somebody is specializes or whatever that you trust yeah they'll just take you at your word yeah there's a it's literal a, that's how we're supposed to be yeah. wow there's a literal uh like chemical get, that gets released in your brain when you turn 13. oh boy that you start to question now oh boy oh, yeah, yeah. and reason. yeah and reason yeah. for like yourself the, the no chemical no. and then you have a choice then yeah. Yeah. oh boy yeah yeah. Well, we know of locally a youth group, and they were teaching their kids red light, green light, yellow light, but God, just, I mean, just pumping, and you, this is what it was, sometimes God says yes, sometimes God says no, sometimes God says wait a while. Yeah. I don't read that in my Bible. Where is yeah. that in all the Bible? I do read this, all the promises of God in him are yes. Yes, amen. In him are yes. Every time. That I pray in line with this. What's the answer? What can I count on? Yes. But see, that's yeah. religion, and they think that's holy because how can you? It's like blaspheming mm -hmm. when you think you know God. Wow. What he's thinking, what he's going to do, how he's going to, you know, God what? is just. We're just taking him at what he said. Yeah. How can we be presumptuous or arrogant? Well, let's take it a little further. Do they believe this is what he said? Ooh. Do they believe that this is God's word? Wow. See, the smart people, they have all the reasons why it won't work. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there are documentary movies that they tried to prove that this wasn't true. Right. And the things of God was false. And they found out it was more truer than ever. Yeah. 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 And then they became Christians. They became Christians. Well, if you think about it with a person, let's just say I was going to go somewhere with mom and I go, you know what, guys? I never know what she's going to do. Yeah. I never know. And if I would say something, you'd say, don't, yeah, you don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. That wouldn't be a very good relationship now, would it? And I bet you'd have a hard time believing God. Yeah. yeah. The thing yeah. about documentaries, though, is they were digging into the light. Yeah. So the light was illuminating what the truth really was. So that, I mean, when people are digging into the truth of the Bible, there's no way that it can't fix them. Yeah. Well, these people looked in the world. They didn't look in the Bible. They looked in history. Yeah, they looked at, um, they were trying, that one show. Case for Christ? No. The Investigator. Investigator? Yes, that is so they good. They were looking at secular uh, They were looking at a proof that Jesus accounts. died or not. Yeah, in and, and biblical times, and but risen. just the secular. Yeah. Yeah, and they piece together, piece by piece. They call it circum circumstantial evidence. Yes. You know, it just implied, you yeah. know, it had to be then. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> that was something. Yeah. Wow. Because his baby died, and so he started well, this is a true not story, believing. Right? True story. True story. Yeah. Started not believing. Yeah. So then when he was teaching this criminal class, they were saying, you don't even believe there's God. You don't even believe it. It's a good movie. It's called The Investigator. It's really and good. And the, 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 the TV series, have it over there. Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, that actor, this story is about his brother in real life. In real life. Yeah. He was yeah. a real cop in real life. Yeah. 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 It's a real good <laughs> So Sarah judged God faithful. Yeah. And she received the promise. Do you suppose that if we would judge God faithful as to what he said, well, the first problem is maybe we don't know that he can promise something. You know, you don't make good on the contract that he's given us. Yeah. This is full of things that God's promised and made available. If you don't know about them, they're not automatic. Yeah. We've given different examples of that. But you have to find out what's yours 
and then you've got to prove or uh, you've got to judge God faithful and act like he's true. And that's by faith. That's by faith. And it's not even our faith. Yeah. It's his. Yeah. And we don't have any problem. Most Christians don't have a problem with this when it comes to salvation. You know, you heard somebody preach that Jesus loves you, he died for you, rose again, and you, you ask him into your heart and, and you just they're saved. They act like they, you know, they trust it. But when it comes to other things, you know, maybe God won't come through. You know, maybe this is hard, or maybe, you know, we're taught that there, these things are hard. We're, that's not the way it is. Yeah. <clears throat> um, one thing that you can have, you know, uh, I heard somebody preach. They said, don't, don't remove God from your faith formula. Ooh. That's, what, that's what Chad Gonzalez was really drilling into us. And that's really good. Because we, you know, we know the faith scriptures. And we go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to get this. And we forget to include God. He said the other day, he said, it's not a faith problem, it's a relationship problem. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because now we're just relying on our faith. Yeah. yeah, we're looking to us. We're just still looking oh, to us. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And it's that connection. Relationship is a connection. Yeah. That's like if you're going to call up the power company and be like, yo, power company, what's your problem? My lamp isn't turning on. They would go, did you plug it in? Well, no, but why isn't it turning on? There's a problem with you. That's what we do. God, there's a problem with you. Yeah. I'm like, no. Did you plug it in? Did you plug in? Are you connected? Yeah. If you stay connected, things will work. Yeah. It's the most amazing thing, you know, because God, he, he's a person. He's not a human on this earth. He's not a physical body, but he's a spirit. He'll talk to you. And if you'll fellowship with him, he'll lead you right. I think of Kenneth Hagin on that bed of sickness, doomed to die. But something inside of him told him, the answer's in the book. The answer's in the book. Mm -hmm. And he was just, he had a willpower. He said, if it's in there, I'm going to find it. He just spent time with it. And he just, until, you know, long story short, he, he found the truth. And he was healed. And he preached it. He said, if you'll be open to the truth, God will lead you right into healing. Praise He'll lead God. you right into baptism of the wow. Holy, Ghost, Holy Spirit. Speaking with He'll lead you right into it. Yeah. Because he wants you to have everything he's provided. So everything that we have been led into since we got saved. Because, think about it. How many years have you been saved? How many here have been saved at least five years? Ten years? Fifteen years? Twenty years? Twenty-five years? Hold on, let me do some math. Yeah. Thirty years? I'm not that old. <laughs> Forty years? I mean, think about it. Think about yeah. it. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Wow. What did you that's say about, a long time. What did you say about the faithfulness of God that you see it in the Bible? If you, he's so faithful that if you see him do it one time, because he never changes, he said, he will do it again. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Man. What did you just say before I said that about the, uh, Which thing? what I just said? Which thing? <laughs> How long have you been, been saying lots of things? How long have we been saying? How long oh, have we been saying? Uh, what were you saying right uh, before that? What was he saying right before that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It, it was, was really, really good. good. We were, we, I think we needed to go with that a little bit. What was it? Oh, no. The answers to life. Yeah. This has the answers. It's our con. It's our. Uh, it's, no, that he's come through every he's time for us. Through. Look how, how long we've been saved. Look at how long we've been saved. We're ta talking about having. Having faith without taking God out of our faith equation is that the relationship part. Oh, that you were saying that uh, that if we really had the relationship, that healing just comes with, yeah. when you have He'll lead us. He'll lead us right He'll in. He'll lead us in it. So just think about how we have had relationship. How many things have we been led into? Has He led us into? We did not go into that ourselves. Yeah. He led us in there. Yeah. The reason why we went in is because in that particular place, we have relationship with him. So we are having relationship. We have grown. Yeah. We have grown. Since, since I've known you guys, all of you have grown. We've all grown. Well, that means our relationship has grown. Yeah. Well, that wasn't so hard. We can keep going. Yeah. And just like that wow. vehicle ex uh, example... We need to build experience with God. Yeah. We need to start building our Here's history with God. Here's another thing. 
what if the, what about the areas that we are constantly having trouble with, constantly coming back, we're repenting over, we're, you know, we're just like, oh my gosh, can't believe I did that, I'm at this place again, I'm at this place again. We are lacking relationship in that place. Mm. That's easy fix. Oh my goodness. That's an easy fix. Just develop the relationship in that area with God. Wow. Yes. That is a cool thing. Wow, yeah. We should write that down. We should write that down in our notebook that we have, where we're writing things when we talk to God about that we don't want to forget, and write down our hard places. Write down the areas in our life that are not a blessing, not right, not a joy, not, you know, it's just not there yet. You know it. You yeah. know everybody knows it. You know God knows it. It's, all, it's just constantly there. And then ask the Holy Spirit, how do I develop a relationship with God in that area, in that place? Yes. Yeah. Because like you said, once we get that relationship, we get that union, we get that abiding, that, you know, it comes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And yeah. you start work you start building that now. Yeah. yeah. How to develop what? How to develop our relationship with God in that area. Because like John said, when we get a relationship in that area, well, it just it comes. You know, what if we just come. what if we just define our terms a little bit? What if, you know, since God's gonna lead us into those things through the relationship we have with them. Right. But we just haven't fellowship with them over there. Yeah. We right. haven't you know, uh, I, I heard this example where actually that story I was just telling about that uh, where he was healed. He was reading in the word and the Lord brought him to I think it was Matthew six, where it talked about do don't, don't worry. Don't, you know, uh, right before uh, Matthew 6, 33, the uh, seek first kingdom. He talks about not worrying, take no thought for your life. And he said everything up to that point was light. The Spirit of God was helping him to see it. And it was, it was just a revelation. But he said, I can't do that. Everything after that was dark. Hmm. The fellowship cut off right there. Yeah. Until sometime, I think it was weeks later, finally he went back and said, Lord, I'll do it. I'll do it. And the Lord helped him with it. And everything... It's like he came back, he get, got back to the path. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, the path of the just is as the shining light, it grows brighter and brighter yeah. to this noonday, perfect day. Have you ever had a string of Christmas lights and half of it stops working? If you really take the time, which I usually don't, I throw it away and just buy new ones. But if you really take the time, you could check every single light bulb until you find which one's the one that's not working. Guess what? We have somebody who does that. Have you ever had like car problems and it's electrical and they have to have like testers and they go everywhere and they test where is this problem starting from? That's what the yeah. word of God does. Yeah. It's the sword of the spirit. It divides between soul and spirit and it finds those weak mm -hmm. spots for you. And, yeah. and the Holy Spirit, he'll show you those. That's good. Yeah. And then you can find those and fix yes. it. Replace yeah. it. Great. And then yes. your Christmas life. So work. I was just, I happened to be listening to Chad uh, today and, um, he was talking about healing. And I was thinking about, so all of us, if I were to ask all of us here, do you believe that God wants you healed? We would all say, yeah. Do you believe Jesus died, took your place, took your, your griefs, your sorrows, every disease, every sickness, every illness, you would say yes, right? Yeah. yeah. Why are we dealing with stuff? Why are things hanging on? Why are there areas with our flesh, with our body that have not you know, uh, gotten, been healed. How come that's happened? Well, this is really cool because um, I think it's just amazing how uh, Chad, because we, we um, looked at this a couple years ago when we went through healing. We went through the inner healing. We talked about our imagination, our thoughts, our inside things, our inside words, our inside beliefs, our inside perspective. How do we see ourselves? How do we see things? Well, so Chad talks about, in those areas, use your imagination. See yourself completely whole in that. See yeah. Jesus come up and say, say, you're healed, you're healed, yeah. you're healed in that. See that, see, stand before Jesus, see that come off of you hmm. and onto him. You know, use that imagination. Yeah. And then he says he does that all the time. But you see, even that, if you really pushed it, you could take out a lot of that equation too. 
Well, you can do Ooh. that with anything. Yeah. Where what I'm talking about is sometimes you need to go back to the last thing he told you to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you something he told you to do, and it probably didn't seem like that big a deal. But when when did the path stop being light? Yeah. When did you start stumbling and go, hey, why can't I see what's going on here? Why? That's why good. is everything? Why is this gotten hard? Yeah. A lot of times you you get on that struggle bus. Where did you get on that struggle bus? Have that turn that bus around, get off, and get back on the path God has for you. That's good. Because if Struggle's we, over. if we, uh, uh, I think Smith Wigglesworth said this. He said, if the devil can get us off of our faith in God, he can get us off of the path that God has for us. Or you could say it this way: if he can get us out of fellowship with God, yeah. Because our faith is directly tied to us having fellowship with God. Do you think when Jesus was uh, supposed to go to Jairus' house and he tells, no, it was Lazarus, it was Lazarus, and he tells his disciples, we're going to go wake up Lazarus, I'm going to go wake up Lazarus, he's, sleep, he's sleeping. And the disciples were like, what? And so it got, you know, the conversation went on, finally he said, okay, Lazarus is dead. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to go raise him up. Well, so... Jesus spoke this ahead of time. Yeah. He spoke, mm -hmm. he's sleeping, and I'm going to go wake him up. What was he doing? He was setting that. He had that all, he had that all from the Father, yeah. from the Father, because yeah. he said everything, this is the most amazing thing. I never thought of this way before, because it always had a little block right there. When he said, everything the Father tells me to say, I say. But then he says, Everything I see the Father do, yes. I do. He's used, he's seeing it. Whoa. He's seeing the no Father way. do it. Wow. And all he does is walk in those footsteps that God is doing. Yes. Already. Because he said that. He said it's the Father. He's doing it. That's amazing. Oh, wow. my That's gosh. amazing. Wow. We have to see that. Yeah. First, yes. we have to see God we have to have that relationship with him yeah. that he shows us what he is doing. Yeah. Or I've seen what the Father has done. I'm doing it. Yeah. Wow. That's Praise good. God. Can I read something here? Yes. Um, he wants everybody to save people. Yeah. Family members, family yep. Yeah. this in the movies a coach will be right there and watch you and see your strength your weakness what your next step you can do because he's not going to take you so far that you get totally discouraged and put you in failure after failure after failure no he knows he when sees he your can, potential he sees your potential yeah. and he wants he needs to have you succeed succeed so you keep going yeah yeah that's really cool he wants that, he wants that success more than you want yeah so he's got to get you to want it wow. like he does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for you to trust him enough. Because if you don't trust, yeah. trust your coach, yeah. he's going to tell you to do something. You're going to be like, no, that's too hard. Wow. Your coach is yep. going to go, that trust I fun. know you can do it. Wow. Yeah. wow. And not only does a coach push you as far as you can go, but he also makes sure that you get rest time in. Yeah. Because rest is just yeah. as important as your training or your every, workout. Every one of these by faiths, God saw their potential before they did Yes. He saw what they were going to accomplish with him. Yep. And almost every one of those, they came to a place where they said, God, this is impossible. Or some of them tried to, they messed around trying to get it done their own way. Or, or you know, like Isaac, he sowed in the land. 
before that, he was going to leave. And God told him, no, you stay. I'm going to bless you there. All of these, God saw. He's like the coach. He saw their potential. He said, no, you, you stick with it. You do this, and it'll work out. Or he'd stop, and he'd go, no. Wait, he'd, he'd correct a little bit. No, you're doing this. Do this right here, and you get, it, you get it worked out. God's doing that with us. When you said about, If we're open to the truth, he's doing that with us. Yes, yes. yes. When you said that about the imagination thing, there, I always just think of this as an example is when we were at prayer here and God gave me that video of the mission. We were doing that at the time with Taya. And it was a video and I saw it, the whole thing from start to finish. And so we filmed it and these guys were just so cool because they just did whatever I said. <laughs> my favorite, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and I just did. You got us to clean the house, what, what the I heck? Saw. I was like, okay, put your shoes on here. Yeah. You know, this is what I saw. That's we're just cool. acting it out. That's yeah. what Jesus Wow. That's what he was doing. Wow. And that's what we can do. And yeah. so where the struggle is, we're trying to figure everything out. We're trying to see it first on our own. We're trying to, you know, and this is so struggle. How easy is it when somebody is doing it and says, okay, do it like this? Wow. You know what it is? Wow. It's that's like amazing. it's like when we're in school and you cram for the text for the test. You know that's a form of cheating. <laughs> you're cheating yourself of learning the way that it was intended for you to learn it because the intention was that you get a grasp on this yeah why it is this way and how to how to walk this out versus like you with that bus when you took your bus truck yeah you didn't know anything you just knew the words and you knew vaguely where to point God wants to know how this thing works he wants to bring us to the place and that's why you've got to be in this even specific areas until you see yourself in it. That's good. Ooh. You need to, this produces words, always produce pictures. I mean, blue dog. You can see a blue dog. Yeah. If I, if I say blue dog, you're not seeing B-L-U-E space D-O-G. Well, I do, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you stayed there long enough. I don't know why, I just do. If you stayed there long enough, you can get that image. Yeah. You can get that. That's we cool. can get this image of how great God is, how faithful God is. That's cool. And our faith will reach out when we see what God has given us. There's no outrage where there's no ownership. You know, if somebody came up and, you know, hmm. took, took, uh, took, stole a car from you, but it was a rental, you'd say, Hi. See Bye. you there, buddy. Bye. And if it's your car, you'd get, hey, somebody stop him. Get him. And you, wouldn't, you wouldn't allow that to happen. Yeah. We don't see this as ours. No. We see this as just something that belongs to somebody. Maybe I can get wow. it's yours. Yeah. Wow. Don't let the devil take that. Right. I'm thinking of a certain minister. His daughter came home once and she was sick. Said I, 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 I think I have the flu or something. And he goes, and it just came up in his spirit because he listened to see what the coach would tell him. And he said this. It came out of his spirit. You're not the sick trying to get healed. You're the healed, and the devil's trying to take your healing away. Mm -hmm. She said. Say that again. So he said it again. She goes, I'll be right back. She goes in her room. I don't know what she did. She got in the scripture. Whatever was said to her was what she needed to hear to take it back. And she came back in, and before long, she had appetite. She had supper with them. You see, we have to take ownership of these things yeah. and not let the devil mess around with us. Don't let the devil mess with your job. Don't let him mess with your family, with your mind. You put a stop to that. He told us to put a stop. There's nowhere in the New Testament where God tells us to ask God to take care of the devil. Right. Yeah. He put us in that position. Right. You tell the devil to stop. I remember the day that I heard Kenneth Hagin say, and it was on satellite, and uh, he said, now the hardest thing that you did was get saved. If you made Jesus your Lord and Savior. Which he was said, easy. Which was, was, really easy. was easy. Which was easy. He's saying the rest is should be easier. Yeah. Somebody oh goes, oh no, gosh. it's all hard. Yeah. No, no, it's all easy. Yeah. So then he said, but many have not made Jesus your physician, huh. your oh. healer. So he's, he walked us through it. He said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do the same thing that how you got saved. We're going to do as Jesus as your That's healer, so good. your physician. That's so good. What was he doing? He yeah. was getting our perspective yeah. changed. Our relationship with Jesus was not just going to be our savior so we go to heaven. No. Now he's going to be our healer, our physician now yes. with anything and yep. everything that would come against us. And you can take us. that further. You can yeah. take him as your provider. Yeah. 
as your, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. But then you've got to see that. Yeah. You have yeah. to see that. So I, uh, telling on myself, so today, this morning, I was dealing with something in my body, great pain, and I was like, oh my gosh. And it, pain is like from the devil to get your mind distracted. Look at me, look at me, look at me, it really hurts bad, you can't work, blah, blah, blah. And finally, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just trying to get, you know, because we've been learning some stuff. Yeah. Get ready to use it, you know, get what, ready to learn what, use what you've learned. So, well, that's a good teacher. Yeah, yeah so I'm like, Pop quiz. trying to keep my mind on the Lord and the word and what we've learned. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So finally, I texted Natalie because I knew she would have her phone because we they were somewhere else. And I said, okay, like, you got to pray for me because I'm dealing with this, blah, blah, blah. And she sent back. I was so mad. Not at you, back. but I was so mad at the devil. Yeah. I'm like, you're really dead. Quick. So she said, uh, you are no longer connected to that pain. That's so it good. has no power over you. It's Woo! part of the curse. You have the healer, the ah! pain taker, living and flowing through every part of your body. Yes. Wow. I'm like, yeah. That's so that so gave, good. And Woo! I'm like, that's right. It doesn't have any power over me. Wow. And then yep. the devil's right there. Well, how can it feel so real then? Yeah. I'm like, this is just yeah. dumb. Yep. I, got a, cool I got a cool example of it. There was an article put out about white-tailed deer. And they said the white-tailed deer, you've got to kind of study them if you want to catch them, if you want to shoot one, whatever. And the white-tailed deer lives by its nose. It lives by its nose, by a sense of smell. And, but not to say that it can't see, because it can. And not to say that it can't hear, because it can. But if you're out hunting those, and that buckle, it's gone. It caught a whiff you, it's gone. We as believers, you know, we can see. You know, sure we can see. And sure, you know, we can sense that that's going on. But we live by this. This is what we live by. Yes. This is what we're wired. Sure, we see thefts in the natural. Yeah, you know, whatever, that's there, sure. But this is what we live by. We're controlled. We act on this before that. This supersedes what I see or feel. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I could have texted any of my family or any of you guys, and I would have got the same response. Yeah. That's what's so cool about being in a church family. We yes. have our people. Yeah. When you're at a weak point yeah. or whatever, don't just give it all up. Do something about it. Yeah. Well, that's like Peter and them. They went to their own company. Yeah. And they prayed together. I like Keith Moore calls them faith buddies. You, sometimes you yeah. call, just tell me, tell me how much faith I have. You have so much faith that the faithful call you faithful. You just, you're so faithful. Yeah. You got all this faith. Yeah. That's what we're doing for each other. Yeah. Well, in this last Wait, six, Wait, Sydney seven, wants to say something. Right. So God gave me the opportunity to reach out to someone at work because he was dealing with a situation. I won't get into it, but he, a situation that has a lot of circumstances that are being dealt with. That's cool. Yeah, that's so good. I was able to bless him with the fact that, you know what, it's not done yet, so don't give up. That's because awesome. He's fighting. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Wow. Do you know that song? You should send that to her. Oh. What were you going to say? Well, I was just thinking you brought that up about taking the Lord as our healer. Maybe we ought to take some time and do that. Yeah. This is the last few minutes. Yes. Somebody says, ooh, that sounds hard. Can we do enough time with that? How long did it take you to get saved? I know. You accept wow. Jesus as your Savior. Yeah. You just sure take him as your physician. Like, you know, yeah. you say, well, I'm going to get, you know, in the natural. You go, well, I, I don't know about this doctor. I'm going to get a different doctor, get a second opinion. You know, let's get a higher opinion, a higher yeah. physician. Yeah. So, I like to picture a Chad. John had told the story. He heard Chad say that he had an experience in heaven. And he said one thing he really noticed was he could like hear this surging yeah. and he could feel like just power just flowing through him. We have that all the time. Praise but we God. just don't take notice. Yeah. So sometimes like when a symptom comes up, I'll just stop and I'll just imagine. Like when you take a pill and it dissolves or you put like those uh, those tablets in the water and it just starts dissolving. Oh, that I picture yeah. that. 
that every part of my body that's just going yes. into every that's part so good. inside out. That's good. Ooh. So let's go to Romans 10. This okay. will be our last scripture in Romans 10. This is good. Let's just, you know, take the steps okay. and do it just like getting saved. So in Romans 10 and verse 9, it says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Easy, right? Easy. For with the, verse 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what did you do? You found out and you said, you know, you asked Jesus to come into your heart. That was it. Yes. So let's take Jesus as our healer. The Bible calls him the great physician. Yes. In fact, Jesus put himself, obligated himself to heal every person that came to him to fulfill that prophecy. Yes. He is our healer. Yes. He is our redemption. Oh, he is the God. payment for yes. every sickness that ever. He went to that scourging post. Yes. He was tortured. This, I mean, just his body mutilated to the point where the Bible says you couldn't recognize him as a human being. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So let's just together, let's just open ourselves to him as the healer. Praise God. So just close your eyes and just yes. put Jesus on your mind and say, Father God, I accepted Jesus as my Savior. I accepted Jesus as my Savior. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. He came to live inside of me. He came to live inside of me. Jesus. Jesus. I see in the Word. I see in the Word that you're not only my Savior. That you're not only my Savior. But you're my healer. But you're my healer. I know from the Word of God. I know from the Word of God that when you were beaten. That when you were beaten. When you were bruised, when you were bruised and, your body was broken, and your body was broken, that every sickness, that every, sickness every disease, every, disease every, wrong thing, every wrong thing that could ever happen to my body, passed on to you. Passed on to you. In the spirit, in the spirit it's, a done deal. it's a done deal. Jesus, Jesus I take you, I take you as, my personal physician. as my personal physician. And I believe it. And I believe it. And I receive it now. And I receive it now. And I thank you, Lord, for it. And I thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I yield to you. I yield to you. I open myself. I open myself. To your leading. To your leading. Your guidance. Your guidance. And your correction. Your correction. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Woo! Thank you, Glory Lord. To God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So what do you do when you get a new physician? Well, you start fellowshipping with them. Yeah. You tell them what's going on. Yeah. You allow him to start prescribing and working with you. The well, Bible says, it, it, uh, Rick Renner brought this out. He's a Greek scholar. And he brought out that when Jesus would heal people, a lot of times it would use a word that we have the root word that has to do with therapy. And it wasn't just... He just, you know, patted them and hit them on the head and spit on their eyes. No, he had them do something. Mm -hmm. That therapy, what is therapy? They work with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do this. Now keep doing that. Continue to do this. Okay. Jesus will work with you. That's so good. We take him as our healer. He's Great. the same now as he was then. And he's the same healer to now as, today as he, as he was then. Praise, Praise God. He, God. You know, Jesus, he is like the Father. Yeah. And so when Jesus said, I do everything that the Father does, yeah. I do. Well, it's the same. We say, I do everything that Jesus does, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Praise God. Wow. That's good. That's amazing. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. i got to rewatch this. Praise so God. good. It's just so powerful. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. He's the Lord cure God. all. Yes. 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 Yep. He's that serpent on the pole that God had Moses make. And when they looked at it intently and they allowed it to affect them, they were healed. Yeah. And don't you think they had some pain going on? Being yeah. bit by snakes, poisonous snakes? Fear. Yeah. yeah. I mean, panic. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So a little they, bit of care there? But yeah. it didn't matter how bad it was. All they had to do was look at that. Right. They looked at it. And when they did, they, they began, that poison began to dissolve. Yeah. The, the bite began. I, bet, I, I believe that bite healed up. I don't think it mattered how far gone they were. Yeah. No. I if mean, if look, there was yeah. still a breath, if they could just look at it, even if they were bitten five million times and they were on their last leg, you know, if they looked at that, they were healed. And look what, look what thing that God made for them. And it was their own doing that did this. They, yes. I mean, he could have just been like, see, there I told you, but he still made a way out. Yeah. And it was their own doing. And now he says we can take up serpents and Whoa. snakes so they won't oh, hurt us. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. Woo. We're redeemed. Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise yeah. God. That's yep. amazing. Woo. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Right. Yep. But that was for those who believe. They, they yeah. that believe yes. on me, he said this is the proof yep. of the believing ones. Yep. They'll take up serpents. Yep. They'll, they'll cast out demons. One thing that keeps coming to me is... Uh, and I really believe it's from the Lord, is that the Lord wants his body, his body. Which is the church. Which is the church. Yep. Healed. Yeah. Healed. Yeah. Because if you look at the Great Commission, it's the believers that raise the dead, yes. cast out the devils, spoke, spoke with new tongues, take up serpents, yep. and laid hands on the sick and they'll recover. They were doing that to the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. But the believers were already healed. Yeah, yeah. We're being servants to circumstances when we do that. Yeah. Where we're, we have been given all authority, all power yeah. to trample on those. We're yeah. no longer a servant to that. I think that we are in a huge move of God for the church to rise up in the mm -hmm. resurrection and life yes. and be like Jesus in the yes. earth. Yeah. I believe that yeah. the church, if we let it, if we get on this move, get in this move, and trust God and believe in him and let the Holy Spirit guide us in this, coach us, train us, develop us in this, get us to the place where we receive this revelation knowledge, start walking in this, start talking this, seeing this. Yeah. We're going to be just like Jesus. Jesus never needed to be healed. We never even see an occasion that his disciples needed to be healed. That's where, that's, that's yeah, that's where the good. Lord is bringing yeah. us into Yep. Praise God. We don't see the disciples begging Jesus, no. please heal me. No. Nope. And Jesus going, no, nope. we'll get a better testimony. And that's, that's why garbage. we don't watch. Yep. Because that's exactly the chosen. Yep. yep. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise. How much more yeah. are we in yes. him? Yep. Yes. And him in us. Yes. That's right. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you picture that Jesus can never, will never be sick anymore. He already took all that. It's all dead. No more. He's in us. We're one with him. One with him. So no longer What's in can him be. flows into us yes. as one. Yep. Jesus can't get sick, so neither can I. That's right. That's Jesus right. can't be poor, so neither can I. The devil can't know the difference. If Jesus is living so far inside you, yep. you won't even know that it's you. He is the Prince of Peace. Shalom, peace is nothing missing, nothing, nothing broken, broken, completely whole. Completely whole. That. Yes. Yep. Nothing can harm Jesus. Nothing can harm us. Yep. He, his goal is that we trust him with everything. Every area that he's our provider. He makes good. And what he requires of us is just to lean back on him. That's right. Is when he exactly says do, right. we just do it. Yep. He's not, just he like says, he did with the Father. He says we'll never be put to shame. That's Those right. Those that trust in him will never be put to shame. We think, oh, yeah. he's going to something embarrassing and then people are going to make. No. Nope. No. He wants every need met. Hallelujah. Yep. God. Yep. Everything I say is what the Father tells me to say. Everything I do is what I've seen the Father do. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't work. So here's the yeah. deal. Jesus said, you're going to do the same works that I did. We've got that. And greater works. We are going to see some stuff. Woo! Hallelujah. We're going to see him. We're going to see him doing yes. some stuff. And that's yeah. what we're going to do. Yeah. That seeing Woo! and doing what you see and saying what you hear only works if you're like this with God. Yes. If you're fellowshipping with Him, that yeah. means you talk, but you listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Woo! Yeah, he's got it.
exciting days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We will be back Sunday morning at 11. God bless you. We love you. See you guys.